In a future where time is literally money and aging stops at 25, only the rich can live forever. The rest are left to negotiate for their immortality. A desperate man, accused of murder, is on the run with a hostage. Time is running out. Will they make every second count? By 2169, individuals are genetically modified to cease aging at 25. Once this occurs, a countdown timer with a year left appears on their arm. To continue living, they must work, as time has become the currency of society. This implies that the wealthy are essentially immortal. The nation is segmented into time zones to segregate different social classes, with New Greenwich being the wealthiest zone. In the slums, Will resides in a small apartment with his mother Rachel, and they barely have enough money to make it through each day. Will aspires to earn extra money through time fighting, but Rachel discourages it due to its typically disastrous outcomes. This doesn't prevent Will from being charitable, and whenever he encounters young Maya on the streets, he donates some of his time to ensure her survival. Will and his close friend Borel are employed at a local factory, where snack prices are constantly increasing, and it's common to find individuals who have timed out on the floor. Everyone is paid daily, but the factory always concocts a reason for why their workers didn't meet their quota and pays them less. One evening, Will visits a bar where he used to gamble to collect an hour owed to him by a guy. He also encounters Borel, who is joyfully inebriated thanks to a wild guy buying rounds for everyone. This man is Henry, whose timer boasts an entire century. Will is puzzled by the presence of a wealthy man here and attempts to caution him about the Minutemen, a gang that pilfers other people's time, but Henry disregards him. As Will anticipated, gang leader Fortis arrives and challenges Henry to a time fight. Everyone else in the bar flees except for Will, who conceals himself at the back as a precaution. Henry accepts the challenge but requests a brief bathroom break first. Only one guard accompanies him, providing Will with an opportunity to incapacitate the gangster and escape with Henry through the back door. They sprint a few blocks and take refuge in a deserted factory, which Will secures from the inside for the night. Will is curious about what a rich man is doing in the slums, and Henry confesses he left New Greenwich because he's 105 years old and weary of life. When Will criticizes this as foolish, Henry is amused by the boy's naivety. He explains that the cost of living in the slums is continually escalating to ensure people keep dying, as the rich can only survive if the poor perish. Eventually, Henry and Will fall asleep, and in the morning, Henry, waking up first, transfers all his time to Will, retaining only five minutes for himself. Will awakens shortly after to find a note on the window reading, Don't waste my time. Looking out, he sees Henry on the bridge just as his timer runs out. Unaware of the surrounding security cameras, Will rushes to the bridge to confirm Henry's demise before fleeing. Later, Will visits Borel's home, where he encounters Borel's wife Greta and their newborn. In private, Will gifts Borel a decade, symbolizing their decade-long friendship. In the evening, Will waits for his mother at the bus stop, but she never shows up. Rachel, it turns out, has only an hour and a half left, and the afternoon bus fare hike has made it unaffordable for her. With home a two-hour walk away, Rachel must run if she hopes to see her son again. Will also begins to run when he realizes what's happening. Mother and son collide in the street, but tragically it's too late, and Rachel times out in Will's arms. The next morning, the police force, known as Timekeepers, discover Henry's body in the river. Agent Leon is convinced Henry was murdered for his time and orders his men to review the security footage. Due to the camera angles, they can't see the body fall, but they do see Will's face and suspect him of Henry's death. Meanwhile, Will seeks to avenge his mother's death. He hires a limo under the guise of a wealthy man who got lost and instructs the driver to take him to New Greenwich, which involves paying a hefty toll at each border crossing. Once in the city, he checks into a posh hotel, attracting the attention of socialite Sylvia. After resting, Will dines while Sylvia observes him from a distance. The waitress, noticing Will as an outsider, treats him kindly due to his generous tips. She also advises him that he'll need finer attire if he plans to visit the casino. Will's rapid crossing of numerous time zones raises suspicions in the system, enabling the timekeepers to pinpoint his location. Leon also recalls having pursued Will's father in the past. In the evening, Will purchases a suitable suit and heads to the casino, where he's asked for a voluntary donation of a year as he's not a member. At the poker table, he meets Mr. Weiss, a businessman who lends time and isn't shy about placing large bets. Weiss's daughter Sylvia also joins the table, merely to observe, and Will keeps an eye on her while risking and betting all he has. His gamble pays off as Will wins the game, impressing Weiss and earning an invitation to his next party. The following day, Will purchases a high-end car and drives it to Weiss's party. Sylvia, intrigued by Will, invites him to dance, revealing that she suspects he's from the slums. She confesses that she sometimes envies those from the slums as she lives constantly under her father's guard's watchful eyes, devoid of true freedom. She wishes she could do something reckless or meaningful. Will leads her to the beach behind the house for a skinny dipping adventure, which should qualify as something reckless. Initially, Sylvia is hesitant. Soon, he joins her in the water, and they contemplate the idea of engaging in more reckless activities. When individuals start searching for Sylvia, she takes refuge with Will in a cavern and urges him to return before they land in hot water. The duo re-enters the mansion through separate entrances to evade suspicion. Weiss asks Will to join a game of poker, but they are abruptly disrupted by the timekeepers who traced Will's whereabouts by tracking his car purchase. Will is escorted to a 
secluded office for questioning, but when he reveals that Henry intentionally ran out of time, they dismiss his claim and confiscate most of his time, leaving him with a mere two hours for booking and processing. Leo tells Will that he bears a striking resemblance to his father, whom Will barely remembers. Weiss and Sylvia arrive to assess the situation, and Will seizes the opportunity to overpower the timekeepers, snatch a firearm, and make his escape. He uses the weapon to take Sylvia hostage, and they flee through the back door in Will's car. Leon embarks on a citywide pursuit of Will, and even succeeds in rear-ending his car, but Will counters by driving in reverse. He narrowly avoids a truck at the last moment, but Leon isn't as quick to react and collides with it, allowing Will to get away. As they head towards the slums, Will requests some time from Sylvia, but she declines to assist him. Upon reaching the bridge, Will is distracted by the surveillance cameras and fails to notice the bike strip on the road, resulting in a car crash. Both Will and Sylvia lose consciousness and are later discovered by Fortis and his crew who promptly start draining Sylvia's time. At that instant, the sirens of the timekeepers can be heard in the distance, prompting the gangsters to flee and leaving Sylvia with just 30 minutes. Upon regaining consciousness, Sylvia panics at her dwindling time and pleads with Will for help. Will finds her sudden change of heart towards sharing amusing, but assists her nonetheless before escorting her into town. After their departure, the timekeepers arrive to inspect the car, although Leon first needs to request his daily wage, as he never carries more time than necessary. Assessing the situation, Leon opts not to pursue Will any further, confident that he will initiate contact first. Will visits Borel to seek help, but Greta has unfortunate news. Borel drank himself to death, leaving nine years still on his timer. Sylvia begins to panic again, but Will notices her expensive earrings and drags her to the pawn shop. The proprietor is about to close, but makes an exception upon seeing the value of the earrings. He also notices their desperate need for time and only pays them two days, which they reluctantly accept to survive. Next, they approach a payphone, and Will instructs Sylvia to dial her home number so he can speak to Leon. As a ransom, Will demands a thousand years to be distributed to the timelines in the slums. Leon cautions Will that he's becoming too much like his father and reveals that the man didn't die in a time fight. As Will believes, he was actually involved in something far more perilous. Will abruptly ends the call, and Leon informs Sylvia's parents of the ransom, but Weiss is reluctant to part with what he considers pocket change. Will invites Sylvia to his apartment for an overnight stay, where Sylvia changes into Rachel's previously worn clothes. Sylvia inquires about Will's father, and Will shares that his dad was a skilled time fighter who taught him several techniques. To demonstrate, he holds Sylvia's arm and illustrates the concept of time fighting, a contest of wills between timers. His father instructed him to let the adversary believe they're winning, allow his own clock to nearly run out, and when the adversary is distracted by his impending demise, reverse the situation and seize everything. Will initially believed his dad perished in a time fight, but he now suspects he was likely murdered because he distributed his winnings. Subsequently, Will and Sylvia recount their experiences on their 25th birthdays. Will's timer activated while he was on the street, and he almost immediately lost his extra year due to their debt. Conversely, Sylvia woke up peacefully in bed, and her father gifted her a decade to commemorate the occasion. The following morning, Will observes the timeline building from the window, but regrettably, they have no charity to distribute, indicating Weiss didn't fulfill the ransom. Sylvia is wounded by her father's indifference, but finally comprehends that he amassed wealth by trampling on others' rights. Will advises her to return home, but Sylvia declines, leading them to agree to collaborate and share a kiss. Sylvia does wish to call home, so Will hands her the firearm for self-defense while he keeps watch from a corner. Weiss promptly answers Sylvia's call and disregards her rebukes to alert her that the timekeepers are en route to retrieve her. When Sylvia turns around, she spots Leon advancing towards Will, prompting her to shoot him in the arm. Will seizes the opportunity to inspect Leon's timer and discovers that timekeepers don't carry much time to deter thieves, which encourages Will to allocate some time for Leon's colleagues to rescue him. While Will and Sylvia make their getaway in Leon's car, Leon starts trekking out of town as the locals berate him for not safeguarding the underprivileged. Fortunately, his fellow keeper rescues him before the situation escalates. Later, Sylvia notes that they can't continue driving in a police car, which inspires Will. He impersonates a timekeeper to halt another car on the road, and then they proceed to rob the affluent lady of her earrings and her time, leaving her with only a single day before fleeing in her car. Once they've distanced themselves, sufficiently from town. They halt the car to watch the news and learn that they're now fugitives. Will once again urges Sylvia to return, but she refuses, finding their current endeavor much more rewarding. In the meantime, Weiss is deceiving his investors, assuring them that everything is in order. Leon arrives to inform him that this is no longer a kidnapping case. Sylvia is now being pursued like a criminal. Weiss attempts to persuade Leon with a bribe, but Leon rejects it and reminds him that if Sylvia contacts him, he must inform the keepers, or else he'll be arrested for complicity. Later, Sylvia questions Will if he would genuinely distribute time if he had it. When Will affirms he would, she devises a plan. The duo proceeds to hijack a Weiss money truck and they crash
crash it into a time bank, where they pilfer as many time capsules as possible. The remaining capsules are left for the residents of the ghetto to collect. By the time the timekeepers arrive, there's nothing left. In the evening, Greta discovers a time capsule among her laundry, left by Will as an apology. Will also visits Maya, who is sleeping on the streets, and he leaves some extra time for her as well. The rest of the stolen time is taken to the timeline for the clerk to distribute among anyone in need. At the timekeeper's office, Leon notices there's time that shouldn't be there, and he suspects Will's actions are harming the very people he's trying to assist. The following morning, Fortis attempts to rob a man, but the man can finally defend himself because he purchased a gun. Fortis feigns to let him go, but as soon as the man turns around, he shoots the man anyway. When Fortis checks the man's timer, he's stunned to see he's squandered a lot of time. Will and Sylvia start robbing time banks everywhere, and their escapades make the news. Weiss wonders if his daughter was trying to assassinate him, but his wife points out that Weiss nearly killed her first by suffocating her. A week later, Leon and his men finally locate Will's apartment and prepare to apprehend them. However, Will overhears the radio chatter from the window and immediately flees with Sylvia, bursting into a different apartment to leap through a window at the back of the building, avoiding injury thanks to a safe landing on top of a car. Leon mimics them and starts to chase them through town, and when Will and Sylvia take the chase to the roofs, Leon opens fire on them. Will retaliates but fails, so he and Sylvia descend from the roofs and board the bus. The driver contemplates the idea of turning them over to the authorities, but Will bribes them into silence, and they manage to leave Leon behind. A few hours later, Will and Sylvia check into a hotel, paying extra to book all the rooms and for the receptionist to keep quiet. When a new guest arrives, he's informed the hotel is fully booked, but he manages to catch a brief glimpse of Will and Sylvia going upstairs. Later, Fortis and his men start threatening people on the streets for information on Will and Sylvia. At first, people remain silent because they want to protect their saviors, but Fortis then kills a man to demonstrate his seriousness. This motivates the guy from the hotel to disclose what he saw. At the hotel, Will and Sylvia learn that the bounty on their heads is ten years, which they find quite insulting. Suddenly, Fortis and his men burst into the room and hold the couple at gunpoint, while Fortis explains that the timekeepers leave him alone because he steals from his own people. So now, he must re-establish order. He asserts he doesn't enjoy murdering people in cold blood and challenges Will to a time duel. Will employs the strategy his father taught him, and when Henry starts checking his timer, Will begins draining all his time. The guards approach to watch in disbelief, and Will seizes the opportunity to shoot them all before making Fortis run out of time for good. By the time the timekeepers reach the hotel, Will and Sylvia have already vanished. A few hours later, Will observes that prices and loan rates are being escalated rapidly to compensate for the new time on the streets. Their minor thefts aren't making an impact. They would need an entire million years to even make a dent. Luckily, Sylvia knows where to locate such a quantity. The following day, Weiss is anxious about the situation and arrives at work with more bodyguards than usual. The guards abruptly turn around when they sense a threat, but it's merely Sylvia announcing her intention to surrender. Weiss trusts her and is prepared to take her back. This diversion allows Will to sneak behind him and take him hostage. Then, Will and Sylvia escort Weiss to his office to compel him to open the safe, where he stores a capsule containing one million years. Weiss argues that given a year to a million people only extends their suffering, and that inundating the wrong zone with a million years could destabilize the system. So, Will clarifies that's precisely what he intends to happen. Will and Sylvia escape after confining Weiss in his own office. When the timekeepers learn about the robbery, they immediately pursue them, blocking the bridge to prevent them from returning to the ghetto. Leon is also chasing them, and when he locates them, he focuses so intensely on them that he forgets to collect his daily pay. The keepers open fire on them, but Will simply disregards the bullets and drives through the time zone barrier, enabling him to reach the ghetto. Leon doesn't waste any time and rams his car into theirs. Will immediately exits the vehicle and hands the million years capsule to Maya before he and Sylvia feign surrender. A smug Leon believes he's victorious, but at that moment the timeline announces there's time for everyone, and an enthusiastic crowd floods the street, obstructing Leon's path and allowing Sylvia and Will to escape. Leon shoves people aside to get back in his car and chase the thieves, but when they cross another barrier, Leon has to follow them on foot. Eventually, he catches up to them, and Will guesses Leon used to be from the ghetto too. Leon confirms this and explains he worked diligently to escape, which is how things should be. Then he attempts to arrest them. Will points out there's no point because he and Sylvia only have a few minutes left, so they'll perish soon anyway. This prompts Leon to check his own timer and realizes he doesn't have much time either because he didn't collect his pay. At that instant, his clock runs out and Leon dies right there on the road. Will and Sylvia only have seconds left and they kiss to bid farewell. However, Will realizes the keepers have time in their vehicles, so he runs to Leon's car to take some for himself. Sylvia isn't as quick as him and fears she won't make it, but Will runs back to her and they manage to share time before death catches up to them. Back at the company, Weiss has conceded and instructs his employees not to do anything because it's over. Newscasts across the nation show how people have taken to the streets. The factories remain idle and people are crossing the zones to reach New Greenwich. Authorities insist everything is under control, but everyone knows the system will soon collapse. At the timekeeper's office, the employees decide to go home because there's nothing they can do. Will and Sylvia are never apprehended and they start targeting larger banks to prevent the old system from resurfacing. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to catch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.